My lab works on orthopedic biomechanics, specifically looking at articular cartilage and how that tissue degenerates and causes osteoarthritis. We also look at the intervertebral disc of the spine and how it actually changes its composition and structure during a disease known as adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And this is a severe curvature of the spine that can really affect the biomechanics and the development of organs. So our goals here are really to prevent a disease from developing altogether, um, such as osteoarthritis, or to delay its progression, or once you have it, figure out how to best correct that disorder. So if we take osteoarthritis, for example, our goal here is to detect it before you know you have it. And possibly, can we tell you that a lifelong use of activity, so walking and running are really good for you and why they're good for you and why this will prevent osteoarthritis in the future. If we think about scoliosis, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, we're not so much trying to prevent the disorder, but once you have it, how can we put in instrumentation or hardware that will help to correct the disease, maintain your mobility, and make it predictable so we don't overcorrect, undercorrect, or have to go in and do a revision surgery. One of the tools we have for this research is a serial arm robot. And so this robot functions very much like your arm, called a serial arm, where it's fixed at one end and it has all these degrees of freedom and so it can move in three-dimensional space very well. And what we're using it for is to get at some of the fundamental mechanics that drive the function of the intervertebral disc of the spine or the cartilage of the knee. The reason we use this rather than studying it always in humans or animals is that we can control it under very high precision. So we can apply the loads and the rotations every single time exactly the same way, where if you and I were to go walk down the street, we would have very different gait cycles. We would apply very different loads on our joints. So this helps to standardize everything as we ask these questions. So one of the things that I find really interesting and that really motivates me in a lot of this work beyond the clinical implications of it is the reason we went after this idea of how activity can influence articular cartilage is based on some fundamental bench work. So this is when we actually study cartilage outside the body. We don't study it against a cartilage interface, which is what you typically find inside the body. And we essentially discovered that sliding or simulated walking or movement of a joint would actually cause it to recover and actually helps to maintain the health of that tissue. And now we're actually starting to translate this and look at it inside of people and see if it is also a biomarker. So it's just a very interesting connection from basic science all the way up the scale to hopefully one day clinical benefit. So we're hoping to see the results of this work go into clinical trials probably in the next three to five years. We're developing a new osteoarthritis biomarker that we're hoping to use alongside some type of intervention um, say an injection or a drug, and we're hoping that we can detect if that drug is actually changing the articular cartilage in a positive manner. In terms of the scoliosis work that we're doing, we are bringing this into a preclinical large animal model right now so we can understand if it is actually having the correction and the benefit uh, we hope to see in these younger patients one day.